Let's look at some particular studies of how much corruption costs the people who have to pay. The exact answers, of course, will depend a great deal on the setting and also on the context. Jacob Svensson has a very interesting paper on Uganda. It's called, Who Must Pay Bribes and How Much? He drew his data from an industrial census, and in the census there were answers from 176 firms. Of those firms, 81% had had to pay bribes in the previous year. Those bribes cost an average of $8,300 a year, and to put that in perspective, that's about 8% of total costs. It's also the case in this data set that the more profitable firms pay more. One possibility is that government agents actually demand a higher bribe from the firms they know to be more profitable. Another possibility is that maybe some of these firms are more profitable precisely because they're paying higher bribes. For Peru, there's a good paper by Jennifer Hunt and Sonia Laszlo. It's called Bribery, Who Pays, Who Refuses, What Are the Payoffs? Instead of looking at businesses, they look at households, and they find that 4.9% of households report a bribery episode in a year's time. A bribery episode is either a consummated bribe or being asked to pay a bribe and perhaps refusing. Those households that refuse have a 16% lower chance of concluding business successfully. Imagine, for instance, going to a public utility and trying to have your service connected or restored, and if you don't pay a bribe, there's less of a chance you'll come home happy. Of the bribery episodes, police account for 35% of them, city government accounts for 21%, and the judiciary accounts for 12%. The judiciary, however, demands the highest bribes, perhaps because in some ways they have the most power. They can judge you innocent or guilty, or decide perhaps whether or not you're going to jail. What do these bribes cost? Well, on average, the very poor pay 0.72% of their consumption, the somewhat poor pay 0.75% of their consumption, and the non-poor pay 1.2% of their consumption in the form of bribes in this data set. Now let's look at political bribes in Peru. In particular, during the Montesinos time. This was during the 1990s. Montesinos was head of the secret police, and Peru was a democracy then, but it was an extremely corrupt democracy. What's interesting about Montesinos is that he videotaped a large number of his bribes. Now, this may seem strange, because maybe the videotape incriminates him, but he understood that the videotape would incriminate the other party as well. So he felt that by videotaping these bribes, he would become politically invulnerable. The initial reports were that he had about 2,000 of these videotapes. He claimed to have had about 30,000. That's probably an exaggeration, but nonetheless, these videotapes really give us some fantastic evidence on the scope of corruption in Peru at that time. The numbers are pretty shocking. It was common that congressmen would receive between $5,000 to $10,000 a month. In one case, a congressman received $50,000 in a month. And by the way, these individuals were paid in dollars, not in terms of the Peruvian currency. A cabinet member might receive $30,000 a month. That, of course, would be much higher than the cabinet member's basic salary. So such a cabinet member would really be very corrupt. A judge could receive five to $10,000 a month. And a newspaper, over the course of two years' time, might receive as much as $1.5 million. So here what's interesting is that the newspapers are actually much more influential than a congressman. The biggest bribes were saved for TV channels. The biggest TV channel in Peru, Channel 2, at one point was receiving $6 million a year in bribes, also favors, and that, of course, was in return for favorable coverage. An assistant to Montesinos once said, quote, if we do not control the television, we do not do anything. And by the way, if you're wondering how it was that this government ever fell, it's because one of the television stations turned against them and publicized all of their corruption. Those are just three cases. There are many more with a great deal of variety and difference, again, depending on context and situation. But that's just to give you some typical numbers on how bribery might work.